Was Cormac McCarthy a fan of contemporary fiction? Well, today I'm here to answer this question because in most of our romantic views of McCarthy, we would like to hear him saying, all this fiction is crap, you know, I am the last true author out there. But I recently came across something pretty wild that while writing The Road, McCarthy turned to postmodernism, to experimental fiction to help inform certain aspects of the novel because th the composition of The Road for McCarthy was actually one of his shortest times working on a book. He really spent only two to four years really working on The Road. And one of the books that uh, he references in his drafts that helped inspire him, and, and we'll talk about it in a second, was David Markson's Wittgenstein's Mistress, which is considered, I don't know if anyone out there has read it. If you've read it, let me know your thoughts about it down below. But this book is considered kind of the pinnacle of experimental fiction. It's one of the, it's probably the main book that inspired Infinite Jest and the whole kind of metafiction postmodernist explosion of the late 90s and early 2000s in, you know, the American literature scene. And this was published in the late 80s. And by the time McCarthy got around to this, he was probably in his 60s. And even though, and we'll talk about how this kind of informs the road in a second, even though this is the only true contemporary kind of postmodernist book that McCarthy references, it's obviously not the only one he was reading. And I know some of you guys out there are like me and you're big readers of everyone and you read contemporary authors all the time, but there's a whole crowd of people who are just coming into reading who like Cormac McCarthy because he's different. I'm here to say that even though the publishing world has gone downhill over the past couple decades, there are still true authors out there who are fire, who are pushing the limits and will blow your mind just as much as Cormac McCarthy will. And one of those groups is these metafiction post, you know, contemporary postmodernists. There's not as many anymore. But what makes them great is that a lot of them were, especially like Marx, and Marx was just as old as Cormac. You know, he's basically born at the same time as Cormac. And instead of going more inward into nature, he went inward, but through the mind. Like, Markson isn't some Jonathan Franzen putz type figure. He did live in New York and teach at Columbia University, but he achieved didn't achieve fame until the very end of his life, like McCarthy. And he was about the work. He was basically a holdout of the postmodernist movement for 20 years after it ended. I mean, and that has to garnish some respect because McCarthy's in a very similar vein, you know, the modernist and kind of Western elements that McCarthy brings into his work have long been outdated. And most authors and most people don't haven't written like that in decades. But McCarthy has persevered through that lineage and made it so good that the whole world has to respect it and, and knows it's good. And I could say that about David Markson too. He's written multiple postmodernist novels. And what's also interesting, is, you know, connecting everyone kind of together is that Markson is... An, one of these kings of minimalism that draws from Hemingway, because even though McCarthy has deep roots with Faulkner, with kind of his long sweeping passages and all that stuff that he does, he does use minimalism and a lot of Hemingway style at times. And so what made the late 80s and early 90s a kind of a really wacky time in American literature is that minimalism like took, took hold of everything. It was like sweeping. All the short stories and stuff were like very minimalistic and all the novels and all the professors, everyone was teaching minimalism. And so in Wittgenstein's Mistress, we have this experimental postmodern novel about this troubled artist who believes she's the last person on earth, very similar to The Road. But it's written in a minimal style, which is somewhat contradictory to what we view metaphys metaphysic metafiction and experimental fiction as because a lot of his predecessors like David Foster Wallace and a lot of the people before him like John Barth were more maximalist a little bit more hardcore and you could say that the road features a lot of minimalistic elements even though McCarthy at times expands into some of the most beautiful prose he's ever written he does keep the story very tight and to take this even deeper one could say that this, I'm just coming up with this on the fly right now because I just realized that Wittgenstein's mistress could be an inspiration for Stella Morris. And I'm, I'm going crazy here. This is going to be sick. So in the book, there's this artist named Kate, and she's living at this Long Island beach house. And a lot of the book is just a collection of her thoughts 
about Western culture, about art, about, you know, just like random thoughts that you could say are like philosophical. Who does that sound like? That sounds exactly like Alicia. And Kate in this story has a very solipsistic view of reality, obviously. And this connects to Victim, Victimstein's mistress, mistress because in the Tractatus, which was heavily inspirational to Alicia also, we are presented the idea of a somewhat, if not completely, completely solipsistic world. And David Foster Wallace, when writing about uh, Wittgenstein's mistress, if I remember correctly, asked the question like, what if someone uh, had to live in a tracticized world? Like, what if uh, Wittgenstein's reality came to be? And in Stella Maris, that's what we're getting. We're getting this very isolated character who who is also a female protagonist who is going crazy, who is sitting at Stella Morris. And, you know, she has this one therapist that she's confiding into, but it's just a huge musing of her thoughts. And it's interesting that the road and Stella Morris his two most recent works because the passenger he'd been working on for a while, but he really started turning up the heat with um, Stella Morris in the mid two thousands. And then uh, the road in the mid two thousands. So that's what he was focused on this kind of solipsistic isolation aspect of reality, which is just fascinating. So this is a rabbit hole. I'm going to have to continue going down at a later time. I'm going to have to do research and probably do a full presentation on that. But So I'm glad I make these videos because I realize things in the moment. That is the point of research, everyone.